Hi. In this video, I will show you how to create different types of waveform in MATLAB Simulink. To demonstrate this, I will use a very simple electrical circuit. This is a single diode rectifier. Normally, we have a voltage supply, which is sinusoidal. There is a diode which rectifies the sine wave. And then this capacitor will keep the voltage. And then we have a load which consumes the power. Let me I run this simulation to see the output. Okay, so basically the blue is the input and the yellow is the output. Now the question is, if the input is a different waveform, maybe an arbitrary waveform that you have, how can we insert that arbitrary waveform into this simulation? Okay, so first thing that we have to do is to change this voltage source with a controlled voltage source. So we go to the library and we search for voltage source. Voltage source okay and from the library you select controlled voltage source we put it here and we delete or let me i cut it i put it here okay so instead i will connect this one to here all right so now we have the control voltage source the question is we have to apply the waveform to this control voltage source to control it and then we will be able to do the simulation. Okay, let us search for the term waveform. If you search waveform in the library, there are a number of options. For example, we can take signal generator. This is one option. Also, we can have signal builder. Maybe we can have waveform generator. So these are some options. Another thing that we can do if we search for sequence, we can create repeating sequence with this option. So I just put this block also here. We will investigate all of them. And the last one is from workspace. So if you search term from workspace in your library, there is also another block, which is very important. I put it here. Okay, with this from library, we can actually create any arbitrary waveform. I, at this moment, I disable it to avoid error when we do the simulation. Okay, let us start with this signal generator. So I connect it to here. Let's see, we open it first. With this, we can actually create different type of uh, waveform, sine wave, a square wave, sawtooth, and a random waveform. So in case... The waveform you are looking for, it's one of these, then of course this one is an option. You can use it. Let us, for example, try a square waveform. The amplitude, I put it 1000. And the frequency, let's say we put it 50 hertz. Unit, we can change it to hertz. Okay, now if I run the simulation, we see that obviously we have the square waveform and this is the output. So this is okay. And if I have different time, let's say sawtooth, you can also do the simulation. So this is the sorted. Okay. But maybe the waveform that you are looking for is not any of these waveforms. It's not a sine wave. It's not a square. It's not a sorted. So what can we do then? This block, then we just cut it and put it here. These are what we have used and we know what they can do. So let's say we put this repeating sequence with this one basically what you can do is to create a sequence and then this one will repeat the sequence so for example let's say i create a sequence of 0 1 and 2 from the time or 0 half and 1 maybe And uh, let's say divided by thousand, so this is millisecond, or maybe maybe let's let us put it five, so five millisecond and ten millisecond, and what value let us put a make a triangular waveform, so zero one and zero, and the amplitude let us multiply it by thousand. So in this case. At 0, it creates 0. At 5 milliseconds, it creates 1. At 10 milliseconds, it creates 0. And then it repeats this sequence. Okay, so let us see what we get. All right, so you notice that we have the triangular waveform, and then we can perform the simulation. 
Now, if you already know the waveform, you can basically define it. It is a simple waveform and then do the repeating sequence so you will be able to, to do the simulation as we have done it here. But maybe the waveform is a bit more complex so you cannot do, do like this. You cannot put the points. What can we do then? So now I cut this and put it here. We have another option which is um, waveform generator. So here basically if we double click on it, then we can, let's say we can type the waveform. You can select different types of waveform, step, pulse, square, and so on. So let us try it with sine wave. So sine, amplitude, so let's say amplitude is 1000. The frequency, 2 multiply pi, multiply, let's say 50 hertz, and the phase is 0. Okay, so this is the sign. And then you come to the signal attributes and you have to select proper sampling rate. So one E power minus, let's say five or something like that. Would that be good? Okay, so if I run this one, we see that we have created a 50 Hertz signal and it rectifies it, that's okay. Now let us assume that you want to add another sine wave to this. So you can basically just add it. So sine, for example, let's say the magnitude is 500 and um, the frequency is 2 multiply pi multiply, let's say is um, how much? 321 hertz. And again, the, the delay is 0. So now if I apply this one, basically that would be the input and that is the output. So in case you have a waveform which is combination of well-known signals, then you can actually create it with this waveform generator. But sometimes maybe your waveform is a little bit different and you cannot create it like this. So then what can we do? Let me I cut this. Okay. So there is another option which is signal builder. Um, basically, there is uh, this signal which you can play with it. You can actually create multiple signals. If you want to create more signals, you can do that. And then you can shape any of these signals the way you want. The problem that I have with this is that it does not have a repeating sequence, at least in my MATLAB version, which is 2018. Whatever that you have, the last two points, that line will be extrapolated and uh, the rest of the signal will be like that, which is not convenient. So let me I change the axis or change the time. So maximum time, let's say I put it 10 milliseconds. Okay. And let me I delete these two. Right click and delete. Right click and delete. Bring your cursor on, on the line. You can see that you can actually move it up and down. And here the values appear actually. So you can have the values there. If you want to create a new point, you hold the shift and then left click with your mouse. So a point will appear here. If you want to move the point up and down, bring your cursor on the point and then hold the left key and then you can move it up and down. And if you go on the line, you can actually move it up and down also, the whole line. And if you bring the cursor on the vertical lines, you can actually move them left and right. Okay, so I have this one, for example, like this. Let's say we have a waveform, something like this. And we want to create this. This magnitude right now is 1. Basically, I can put a gain here. Maybe I can search for a gain. and put it here you could also directly change it in the signal builder so now if i run this basically you observe that we have this uh, for the first 10 milliseconds we have the waveform that we plotted and after that is the last part of the signal so if i now for example change this one let us put it like this. This one will continue.
basically you can see that so this is not very convenient uh, i don't know why they don't have repeating sequence maybe in the recent version of matlab they added it okay so let us also delete this put it here now sometimes you have a signal which you cannot create with any of these blocks for example you measured something from an oscilloscope and you want to put that measurement here and it's very difficult to create such waveform with these blocks in this case you use this other block which is from simulink let me i enable this okay so we have a, a block if you double click basically we have to get the data from the workspace so we have to first add the data into a workspace okay so here is my matlab so i have this data file which i got it from my oscilloscope so i can now load the information these are the measurements basically numeric import all right let me also change the name of it to make my life easier so if i for example plot this x1 and x1 and 2 so if you plot this this is the signal that i got from the oscilloscope now we see that at the beginning of this signal there is a little bit of uh, disturbance so i'm going to eliminate a little bit of the of the beginning part of the signal and because i want this signal to repeat so i want to match the beginning with the end so okay so i will have something around this point and then from the end i will also cut the signal at that point so we need to do some work on this signal before we import it to simulink so x2 let's say we define it as x1 i skip the first 100 points okay so if i now plot x2 then this will be better a bit i assume this is x2 so that initial disturbance is not there anymore and then if i look at the beginning of the signal is somewhere around minus 1.05 so i want the end of the signal also to be around that point around here i should do that okay so first let us find the sampling rate of this signal um, we can see that this is basically the the time timeline if i want to find the sampling rate so let's say x2 for example 2 and 1 minus x2 1 and 1 so this is this much and inverse of this gives us the sampling rate basically i'm subtracting the time of the two consecutive data points so this gives me a sampling rate of 400 megahertz okay that's important and now i will cut a little bit of this so we have to cut it from here so this is 2645 2645 so 1.2645 minus this one 1.28 and these are of course uh, milliseconds so basically 0 0.055 multiply multiply 400 1 2 3 1 2 3 400 megahertz so this gives me 6200 so i have to get rid of 6200 points at the end okay so these calculations 
maybe are not very important for this video but it shows the mind process so x2 will be basically x2 from first till end minus 6200 point i don't want them okay so now if we plot x2 this is a good signal that we have so basically this end matches with the beginning of the signal more or less so now if i create a repetitive signal of these we will have uh, this one will be repeated okay so now we have prepared the signal so x2 we have it here it's nice in order to use this signal in in this block from workspace in matlab simulink we have to do a little bit of change we have to create a struct element first and then use that one in in this block so in order to create a struct element basically we say y dot time so for the time we give nothing empty vector and then we say y dot signals dot values this one we give it as x2 but x2 had two columns one was related to time vector one was the values so in this case we should give the vectors that has the values so the second column and then one y dot uh, signals dimensions this is equal to one okay so now we have created a struct element which this struct element will be seen by this block so if you double click on the block and here if you type y you see that this y appeared here you click on it okay so what do we want do we want to interpolate the data maybe we can delete that we can remove the check and then here i want cyclic repetition i click on this and then for sampling time we saw that the frequency uh, the sampling frequency was 400 megahertz so sampling time was 2.5 epo minus 9 seconds okay so now we have the signal uh, let us try the simulation and see what do we get this one is a little bit slow okay so because here we have uh, let me stop because here in the discrete simulation the steps are tempo minus six so that's why it creates a little bit of problem tempo maybe i put it tempo minus seven if this one is not if you, you cannot change it basically you have to come to setting and change your solver so if your solver is this one change it to discrete then you will be able to change that if you decided to to choose discrete solver okay so let us see what do we get now Basically, this is the input signal. As you can see, it's nice. And the yellow one, it's basically the output, which is now gradually being constructed. Of course, here I have a gain of 1000, and the original magnitude of signal was around 7, so that's why we get uh, the blue one is nearly 7000. All right, so this is all for uh, how to create an arbitrary waveform in MATLAB Simulink and use it in your simulation. Bye.